Hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. I have no disclosures. Um, so as we've known, as we've seen today, um, there are a lot of different treatment options um, for metast metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer. Um, and it's, we've learned a lot about how to decide um, when to use what, um, but, but the choices are numerous. Um, once again, these um, include hormonal therapies, vaccines, chemotherapies, radioisotope therapies, and in select patients, PARP inhibitors and immunotherapy. Um, as Dr. Gerard so nicely um, described, we know that ADT inevitably results in castration resistance through various mechanisms, um, including the androgen receptor. Um, and these resistance mechanisms um, tend to occur after metastatic spread um, and can spread from metastasis to metastasis seeding. Um, and we also see patterns of resistance in metastases that are in close geographic proximity, so not necessarily in the same organ, um, suggesting interclonal cooperativity. Um, in a, we're now regarding um, PARP inhibitors. Um, in a study by Robinson et al., which is visualized on the left, DNA repair alterations occur in about 23% of metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancers. Um, and we know that the frequency um, of these increases with disease progression. Um, Dr. Gumela nicely outlined the study on the right, um, which showed about 12% of men had del deleterious germline mutations um, in about 16 genes. And um, these uh, DNA repair defects have important impl impl implications, um, and namely PARP inhibitors induce substantial objective responses in patients with metastatic prostate cancer who are expressing homologous recombination DNA, DNA repair defects. Um, and Dr. Gamella also uh, went over um, that PARP inhibitors are basically pharmacological inhibitors of the enzyme poly ADP ribose polymerase. Um, which is an enzyme that helps to repair DNA damage in cells. And so different forms of DNA damage um, evoke responses um, by different repair mechanisms and signaling pathways. And in human cells, there are five major repair pathways. Um, and these pathways typically deal with specific damaging agents. Um, DNA damage repair pathways are particularly good uh, sources for drug targets as DNA damage repair is different in cancer cells um, when compared to normal cells. Um, and so when you pharmacologically create a second loss of function event um, using an agent such as a PARP inhibitor, um, you're therefore targeting a gene product that is lethal to a cancer relevant mutation, um, prefer preferentially over um, the normal cell. Um, and so as also um, previously, discussed earlier today, um, BRCA2 mutations um, are aberrations in DNA damage repair genes, um, and BRCA2 is the most recognized um, in altered gene in prostate cancer. Um, and we know patients who have BRCA2 mutations um, have a worse prognosis. Um, so the image on the left is analysis by Castro and colleagues of over 2,000 patients with prostate cancer. And you can see overall survival um, of those with BRCA2 mutations, um, it's much lower. Um, and then on the right um, is an evaluation of about 1,300 patients with local or locally advanced prostate cancer um, who underwent radiation or radiation therapy or surgery. Um, and you can see patients who have a BRCA2 mutation um, are at much lower metastasis free survival um, than those who are non carriers. So that leads us um, to the to PARP trial, um, which is looking at, um, which is one of the initial studies that evaluated PARP inhibitors in patients with metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer. Um, this was an investigator initiated open label multi stage phase two study um, with an adaptive design that focused on um, predictive biomarker identification. And basically, um, patients um, were eligible for inclusion if they had metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer. Um, they had progressed on one to two lines of taxane based chemotherapy, uh, ECOG performance status of zero to two, and no prior platinum or PARP inhibitor. They were treated with Elaprib, um, and the primary study objective was to evaluate anti tumor activity. Um, so 50 patients were enrolled in this study, um, and about 
33, there was a 33% um, overall response rate. You can see in the green, um, those are patients who are classified as having response to a lab rip in the clinical trial. Um, and and the, those with aberrations in DNA repair genes had a significantly higher response rate um, in both unadjusted and adjusted analyses with 88% of patients with DNA repair alterations having a response compared to only 6% of marker negative patients who had a response. Uh, these figures here um, demonstrate both the radiographic progression-free survival on the left and the overall survival on the right. And here you can once again see that the biomarker positive patients um, did, did perform better. So median um, 9.8 months compared to 2.7 months for radiographic prog progression-free survival um, and 13.8 months compared to 7.5 months uh, for overall survival in the biomarker positive um, and biomarker negative cohorts. Um, so next came um, the PROFOUND trial, and this was published last year. Um, this was a randomized open-label phase three trial evaluating the PARP inhibitor elaparib um, in men with metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer who had disease progression while receiving um, one of the new hormonal agents. Um, and all of the, all men had a qualifying alteration of pre-specified gene with a direct or indirect role in homologous recombination repair. Uh, the study had two cohorts. Cohort A um, was comprised of those with a BRCA1, BRCA2, or ATM mutation, um, while those in um, cohort B had alterations in any of 12 other pre-specified genes. Um, patients were randomly assigned in a two-to-one ratio to receive a lab rib or a physician's choice of either enzalutamide or abiraterone. Um, and the primary endpoint was imaging-based progression-free survival um, in the cohort A. And so this shows um, the primary endpoint of the progression-free survival um, in cohort A. Um, and as you can see, uh, the median imaging-based progression-free survival was significantly longer in the laparid group compared to the control group, and it was 7.4 months um, compared to 3.6 months for control group. Um, the, later on, um, they looked at overall survival, and this is overall survival in that first cohort. I mean, as you can see here, um, the patients who had a lap rib um, had a longer overall survival of 19.1 months compared to the control group of 14.7 months. Um, interesting, and this was a hazard ratio of 0.69. Interestingly, um, they did a sensitivity analysis that adjusted uh, for crossover from control therapy to a lap rib, um, and that showed a much lower hazard ratio of death of 0.42. Uh, this image here shows the overall survival in the overall population. Once again, a lap rib did well in kind of the overall population, but not quite as well as in the um, cohort A. Um, and that was, they, this cohort did a 17.3 of median overall, overall survival compared to the control group of 14 months. Um, so additional studies have demonstrated different responses um, as well as durations of responses with different DNA repair defects. Um, and so this area is really, uh, further study is really critical um, to, to figure out, you know, which um, PARP inhibitor uh, may have the, the most effect um, for each individual patient. Um, in the profound um, study, uh, there were a significant number of adverse events of grade three or higher. Um, so 51% um, had any adverse event that was grade three or higher for a lap rib um, compared to 38% for the control group. Um, the most common adverse events of grade three or greater were anemia and fatigue. Um, other most common events uh, of all grades included nausea, decreased appetite, and diarrhea. Uh, the next major trial, um, of a PARP inhibitor in metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer um, was the Triton II trial. Um, this was an open label phase two study of um, rucaparib in metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer um, associated with homologous recombination um, deficiencies. Um, and so in the primary um, endpoints of this uh, was objective response rate as well as uh, PSA response. Uh, so efficacy and safety populations included 115 patients with a BRCA um, alteration with or without measurable disease. 
median treatment duration for the overall ep efficacy population was about 8.1 months, and the median follow-up was 17.1 months. Um, confirmed objective response rates um, per independent radiology review and investigator assist assessment were 43.5% um, and 50.8% respectively. And as you can see here, the vast majority of patients either had stable disease or a confirmed objective response rate. Um, and this figure here, um, the figure on the left demonstrates the change uh, from baseline uh, for um, uh, in, uh, invest independent radiology review. And on the right, it's the prostate-specific uh, antigen for all evaluable patients. The top dotted line um, indicates the threshold for progressive disease, uh, whereas uh, the lower dotted line indicates the threshold for partial response. Um, and here you can see at least 50%, um, so 64.5% in the independent radiology review and greater than 50% um, uh, had, or sorry, uh, the rate, and then, sorry, the, so the majority of patients um, had uh, a good objective responses. Um, the safety data, um, for Triton II, uh, a number of patients um, had, um, actually a large number of patients, 99% of the population actually had an adverse event of any grade um, in this trial. About 61% um, had a grade three or greater um, event. Uh, the most frequent grade three or greater adverse events were anemia um, or thrombocytopenia. Um, and the other most common adverse events of any grade were fatigue, nausea, anemia, and increased in LFTs. Um, dose interruptions occurred in 56.5%, in dose reductions in about 41% of patients, 8% uh, had discontinuations, um, and there were uh, three deaths in the study cohort. So as a result of these two trials, um, the FDA approved um, uh, Recaparib for the treatment of patients with deleterious BRCA1 and 2 um, associated metastatic castrate, resist castrate resistant prostate cancer who had been treated with an androgen receptor directed therapy and a taxane based chemotherapy. Um, and then, based on data from the Profound study, the FDA approved Elaparib um, for the treatment of patients um, with the pathogenic germline or somatic HRR gene mutated metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer who had progressed following prior treatment with enzalutamide or abiraterone. So as PARP activity has been shown to support androgen receptor function, inhibition of PARP um, was expected to increase sensitivity to androgen receptor directed therapies, um, irregardless of DDR mutation status. And in addition, androgen receptor blockade downregulates homologous recombination repair gene transcription, which induces almost like a Burka-like phenotype. Um, so given this, Clark and colleagues assessed the efficacy of elaparib uh, plus androgen pathway uh, inhibitor abiraterone in patients with metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer, um, irregardless of HRR mutation status. Um, and they found that in this unselected population, um, there was actually a good response uh, with 13.8 um, months um, compared to 8.2 months of radiographic progression-free survival um, in each cohort. So that led um, to a study for evaluating PARP inhibitors in unselected metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer patients. And so this is the PROPEL trial. Um, it's currently undergoing uh, its it has double blind placebo controlled international phase three study looking at um, a part plus abiraterone as first line treatment in a genetically unselected um, population. Um, it's planned for, it had planned for 720, to, 720 patients randomized in a one to one fashion. Um, they've, all, they've already accrued um, and the study is undergoing now. The next study um, is the Talipro2. Um, and this is uh, a study of um, tilazaparib and enzalutamide versus enzalutamide alone. Um, and the study is a two-part study where the first part is to um, evaluate the safety and starting dose. And the second part is actually the randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study. 
Um, so this is uh, for patients first line metastatic cancer resistant prostate cancer patients. They're going to stratify um, the patients based on previous uh, treatment with a novel hormonal therapy or taxane based chemotherapy, as well as DDR alteration status. Um, as we mentioned, the first part is just determined, determining the starting dose. Um, and then the main part of the study is going to be the double blind treatment study um, with the one to one randomization. Um, and the primary endpoint is radio, radiographic progression free survival, um, as well as safety. So they have lots of secondary endpoints, which you can read here. The key thing for this, um, it, big thing to keep in mind is one of the key exclusion criteria is cardiovascular disease. So going, um, using this data and generalizing this data, um, you know, is going to be, it, you know, important for our patients, um, many of whom who has cardiovascular disease. There are other immunotherapy um, options for metastatic cancer resistant prostate cancer. Um, CYP-T, uh, which is also known as Provenge, is the first immunotherapy agent or a vaccine for hormone refractory prostate cancer. Um, the precise mechanism of action is unknown. However, CYP-T is an autologous cellular immunological agent um, that's thought to work through antigen-presenting cells to stimulate T-cell immune targeted against uh, prostatic acid phosphatase, um, which is an antigen that is highly expressed in most prostate cancer cells. So CYP-T is composed of this recombinant antigen protein. Um, it must be incubated with the patient's isolated antigen presenting cells, ex vivo. And so basically the procedure starts um, where the patient gives blood either at the physician's office, the blood collection center, or the lab. Um, the blood containing the APCs um, is collected by leukophoresis. Um, the patient is sent home and is asked to return to the infusion center when the vaccine becomes available. And the blood sent to Dendrian's uh, manufacturing facility um, where the harvested APCs are incubated with recombinant fusion protein antigen, uh, which contains both PAP and granul granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factors. Um, and this process activates the APCs, uh, which are now hopefully ready uh, to fight the cancerous prostate cancer cells. Um, and so IMPACT trial uh, was the main trial that evaluated CYP-T in metastatic cancer resistant prostate cancer. Um, it was an asymptomatic uh, before chemo uh, with no visceral METs. It was a phase three randomized control study of about 512 asymptomatic men. Um, patients were randomized in a two to one fashion, and they found that uh, median overall survival improved with CYP-T from about 25.8 months um, to the placebo arm of 21.7 months. Um, how, interestingly, however, uh, there was no effect on time to disease progression. Um, and also importantly, there's no PSA or radiographic response. Um, so biomarkers of response are really not well defined. Um, and this is an area of current active investigation. Also interestingly, um, it, the initial data suggests that African-American men um, may exhibit a greater survival benefit um, when compared to Caucasian men. So this was a Secondary analysis of the PROCEED registry, um, which is the largest real world registry of CYP-T in men with metastatic cancer resistant prostate cancer. And using a PSA matched analysis, the study found about a 35.3 uh, month for African American men compared to a 25.8 month um, overall survival for Caucasian men. Um, and they did find that baseline PSA, low baseline PSA, was associated with improved survival. Um, next, we're going to discuss just briefly program cell death inhibitors. Um, so prior to this study um, by Graf and colleagues, PD-1 inhibitors showed no evidence of activity with metastatic cancer resistant prostate cancer. Um, however, in this study, patients with evidence of progression on enzalutamide were treated with PEMBRO, um, which is the PD-1 inhibitor. And some of these patients showed considerable response. So this gained um, a lot more enthusiasm around eight anti-PD-1s. Uh, for the treatment of metastatic cancer resistant prostate cancer. Um, we now know that PEMBRO um, is an option uh, for MSI high metastatic cancer resistant prostate cancer. Um, and about two to 3% of men with prostate cancer have this um, micro satellite instability high tumors, uh, which may respond to PEMBRO. Um, so Dr. Gamela, um, kind of discussed some of this already, how to identify patients. Um, and he spoke about somatic and germline mutations. 
Um, and we know that there are both somatic and germline mutations associated with metastatic prostate cancer. Um, and just a reminder that NCCN guidelines recommend germline and tissue testing for metastatic patients, um, you know, as shown here. So in summary, um, uh, PARP inhibitors are FDA approved for the treatment of metastatic cancer resistant prostate cancer um, with patients with DDR mutations. Um, Rucaparib is for BRCA1 and 2 mutations after AR targeted agent and taxane, whereas Alaparib is for those with DDR mutations um, after AR targeted therapy. Um, CIPT does remain an option for asymptomatic and minimally symptomatic patients uh, without large visceral disease. Black men and men with lower PSA, so less than 29, may have better responses from very initial data. Um, PEMBRO is FDA approved for men with MSI high tumors and guidelines suggest both germline and tumor testing for metastatic disease, um, looking for DDR mutations in MSI high status. Um, and so with that, I'd like to um, transition to Dr. Stratton um, for another uh, case-based discussion. Thank you.